Apart from our iPhones, the most iconic device and probably the Apple device we love the most and causes the most emotion are iMac. And in this video, I thought it'd be interesting to look back and see if we can find out why, why we love our iMacs so much. And then a little bit later on in the video, I'm gonna pull back the curtains and you're gonna join me on my M3 iMac and I'll show you how I basically produced the video that you're watching now in Adobe Audition and in Premiere Pro. But that's all a little bit later on. Now, this isn't a full history of iMac by any stretch of the imagination. I did another video about that last year and I'll leave a card to it either here or at the end of the video if you want to watch that. But I think to find out why we love iMac so much, it's important to look at a few of the, the salient points and, and possibly we can start with emotion. Most of us know that the iMac was responsible for saving Apple. When Steve Jobs came back as CEO to Apple in 1997, the company was in a mess. It was a few weeks away from going into bankruptcy and closing the doors forever. Steve knew he had to act quickly and he had some ideas. The first of those ideas was to clean up a very messy and bloated product line. And then also he had this vision of what Mac should represent going forward for the company. And it was something that was really simple, ultra simple to set up. It all comes together as one unit in one box. It was a, an all-in-one desktop computer and something that anybody with no technical knowledge could set up and have working on their desk within a few minutes, of course. That was iMac. Now, it's all well and good having the ideas. He needed somebody to design it, and that was the perfect storm. When he came back to Apple, he met Johnny Ive. They struck up a great working relationship, of course, going on to design iconic devices like the iPhone and iPad, and they came up with the first iMac, which was 25 years ago. And it's weird. The, the iMac's always had this mistaken impression of just being a pretty face, something that can't do any heavy hitting and just sits in receptions, hotel lobbies, shop fronts, in your kitchen, in your dining room. But that's so far from the truth. We're going to see it later when I begin to edit this video on an iMac. And also we're going to cover some of the more powerful iMacs a little bit later on as well. But the iMac has never been afraid to, to court a little bit of controversy. When it first came out, many said that Steve was wrong to not include the standard at that time, floppy drive. No, he went for CD-ROM instead, always a visionary, always looking to the future. And also, the iMac was the first consumer computer to re lend really heavily into using USB ports on their Macs as well. So that's what I mean, it's always been kind of at the cutting edge. It's always afraid, never been afraid to be different. And then one of the USPs of any iMac and of using an iMac is the display. They've always looked absolutely fantastic. And that got ramped up in 2017 when Retina displays came to iMac. The 27-inch iMac got a 5K display, and I've still got one of those. And the 21 and a half inch iMac got a 4K display. And once you've used a, a Retina iMac or a Retina uh, screen and display, it's really, really hard to go back. Now, I mentioned that iMacs have been mistakenly thought would be in this play thing. But in 2017, Apple was in a bit of a mess with the Mac Pro, it's fair to say. The trash can Mac Pro wasn't performing particularly well. They knew they had problems with it, but they needed to buy themselves some time. So what they decided to do was using this beautiful 5K 27 inch frame they had and chassis that they had ready to go for the iMac, they put in there some super fast SSD, a Xenon processor, and we had the iMac Pro. Everybody that used an iMac Pro said it was a fantastic machine. Many used it for years and years and never went on to get the Mac Pro because this thing was so performant. It was so good. But it was a one and done machine. They never refreshed it. They never gave it any updates. And it kind of just petered out its life when Apple Silicon came along and the first Apple Silicon iMacs in 2021 when M1 iMac was bought online. And the, the iMac Pro just disappeared, sadly. And there was no goodbye so many, it just vanished overnight almost. And of course, when the M where the Apple Silicon iMacs came out, M1, and we're through to M3 now, everything changed for iMac, but they were still caught in controversy. I like the fact that Apple kept a hold of the iconic iMac shape. It had a chin, it had the bezels. People were saying it was wrong. There were still headlines saying it wasn't pretty enough, but it's iMac. You want it to look, most importantly, like an iMac. Just before we jump on to my M3 iMac and start looking at how I edit this video, I've just got to say another massive thank you to you for, well, more than anything, for understanding the video last week. The way that I've kind of understood what you want from this channel is that we get together each week and have a discussion. It will always be about tech. It might be about iPhone, Apple products, Macs, Android, 
but it's going to be a discussion. And you really got me, you understood what I was trying to do with this channel for you guys, was sit and have a discussion. You joined in with the comments. There's been loads of comments on that last video. And every one of them has had good points to make. None of them have been trying to create an argument. You all understood that we were just trying to have a discussion. We're all going to have our own views, but that was the point of the video. So thank you so much for getting involved, understanding, and subscribing. That video alone earned around 200 uh, subs on that one video, which for a channel my size is huge. I passed 3,000 subs in December, and we're already virtually at 4,000 subs before the end of January. I've got a goal to get to 5,000 subs, and it looks like that dream could happen a little bit sooner than I thought. So a massive thank you. And if you have subscribed, don't forget, turn on notifications. I will put a post up just before the video goes up to remind you in case YouTube don't do their job and I've fallen out of favor. I always put post up so that you know the video is coming. So just make sure to turn on notifications as well. So now let's jump onto my base level M3 iMac. I'm going to show you how, first of all, I edit the audio in Adobe Audition. And then a little bit later on, I'll show you the basic way that I go through editing the videos in Premiere Pro. In some of my previous M3 iMac videos, I did a very quick behind the scenes showing you how I kind of work on here. And it seems like you're really interested in it. So this isn't a full tutorial by any stretch of imagination. I'm going to go at quite a pace, but it just give you an idea of how I work if you're interested in that. But more importantly, how good this base level M3 iMac is just to prove that I am using the M3 iMac and not using another Mac. You can see there I'm on the Apple M3. And uh, I'm recording this on the built-in HD cameras and using the built-in mics as well. So the way that I go around recording audio for my videos is through a shotgun mic. I've got a Rode NTG for a shotgun mic. That goes into a Vocaster 1. That adds a little bit of processing to it. And then that's plugged into the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And that records directly into Adobe Audition. And that is this file that you can see here. I've got a rack that I save and use. And this is exactly the same rack that I use on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. The only difference being rather than the denoise plug in there, which comes standard with Adobe Audition, I use Waves NS1, very similar kind of things, but it just gets rid of background noise. So basically you can see the rack there, I've got some denoising, some de-reverb, de-essing, there's tutorials on how to the S's on my channel from many, many years ago, if you want to watch that. Parametric EQ, which just basically rolls off some of the bottom end and has a bit of sparkle on the voice to make it sound better. And then I add some compression as well. So I, when it's been run, you'll see that the file shape will change slightly. And then the only other thing I do in Adobe Audition with this file is then to match loudness because you want the set to a certain standard, which is 20, minus 23 LUFs in video. So I would run that. And once that is done and saved, that file is then ready to use. And I always just double check it's done its job to make sure it's at minus 23 LUFs, which you can see is there. So in here, I have got the video file. I've got the audio file and the little signature you see at the top of the screen. Basically, that's how I go about working with these files for you in the video. So I drag in the video file first, that's the full log footage that I shot. And then I bring in the waveform. Uh, I'm sure that most editors, video, uh, video editing software has got the same thing, but basically I then just line up the audio by synchronizing. And once it's done its trick, I can mute that track out and I know then that I've got perfect sync on the video. And obviously you can see it's in uh, log there. So the first thing I would do, I work with adjustment layers to make sure that it's non-destructive. Uh, non and with, this, with the adjustment layers there, I would then just add on, first of all, uh, something to color correct it to bring the log footage back into Rec 709. And that on Premiere Pro certainly is done in the Lumetri program. And I've got it set up here with the, Black Magic. This is straight from Black Magic. So it's, as you can see, it's as simple as that. It's pretty much done its job. And then I will say this isn't a full tutorial at all, but I thought you just might be interested to see how good this M3 iMac is. And then I'll use a separate adjustment layer, which on there, if I want to use, I don't always do this. It doesn't always need it on uh, videos that I'm making for YouTube. I would then add on a creative light if I want to have a certain kind of film emulation. Uh, I might decide to go and put something on there. I don't ever use much of it, but if, for instance, if I wanted to use uh, something like that and then reduce it right back and just add, it just rounds it off, makes it a little bit more cinematographic. And then with the signature you see, it's a Photoshop file that I set up for myself and you can just add that in and just scale it to size, move it into position. And that's kind of how I go about the basic work, certainly, of uh, editing videos 
in Premiere Pro and sorting out the audio in Adobe Audition. It's a really, really good machine. Uh, I go through making odd cuts and, and when you see zooms, for instance, when it suddenly zooms in on me, there's some uh, plugins that I use which are for Mac only and they're from a company called Film Impact and they are really, really good. I'd be lost without them. Um, and for instance, it's as simple as if I was to make a cut here, again, I'm, I know I'm going at speed, but just to show you really how good this iMac is, you would then just drop on, if you're wondering how I get those really smooth transitions, I don't keyframe anymore at all. I just use one of the uh, plugins that I get from uh, Film Impact, it's called Motion Tween, and it's a case of just dragging it onto there, and you just make some adjustments in the effects control panel. But that's kind of roughly how I go about working and editing in Adobe Audition and Premiere Pro and bringing you these videos every week. This M3 iMac is really, really good. It works so well and the apps actually seem to open up and fire up quicker on this M3 iMac than they do on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. But we love our iMacs. This is what it's capable of. If this was better spec, I'd probably end up editing all of the videos on here because I just love working on this display. But because I got the base model, which I was aware that I was doing for the, for the purposes of the channel and for viewing, it does a great job though, it really does a great job. And if you're just casually editing video at home, honestly, this would do the job. It's just worked with some really chunky 10-bit ProRes log footage here. And as you can see, I mean, it's it's so smooth. It's no, that's at full speed, full playback, and there's no, no drop frames there. <laughs> that's M3 Apple Silicon working for you. Anyway, I think it's time now we get back to working out why it is that we really love our iMacs. So having seen the M3 iMac at work, it's worth us now trying to work out why we love iMacs so much. On those last couple of videos that I made last year, it was clear from the comments how much love there is for iMac. As much as we looked at the brand new iMac and how it worked, most of the comments, or a large number of the comments, were from you saying how much you love using iMacs and how you still got iMacs from 2014, 2015, 2016, and they're still performing well. I've still got well, I mean, I've got one of the very early iMacs into my side there. I've got the 5K 27-inch iMac that I loved and used for years. And that's the point. They become part of us. It could be that they've been around for so long. I don't know. But there must be something about using an iMac that causes all this emotion, other than the fact that they've been with us so long. One of the other things that came through from the comments that you made was that you really were keen to try and get a large 27-inch iMac again. I too would love to see that, but in my heart, I just can't see that there's a place for it in Apple's lineup at the moment. I think we're sitting in a position of, of halcyon days at Apple. It's the best lineup possibly that we've ever had uh, to go and buy a Mac. Anybody can get on board now from the Mac minis, the fantastic MacBook Airs, iMacs, of course. Then you've got the MacBook Pros, which are stunning machines and is the machine that's at the center of this channel. What I edit most of the videos on is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. You've got the Mac Studio, and of course, you've got the Mac Pro as well. There's a, some, there's a Mac out there for everybody at every price point, no matter what you do. So I don't see now where the need for a new large iMac would fit in. But what I am glad about is that Apple have had that little bit of, of a nod to history, a nod to nostalgia, and they've kept the iMac. Even though global sales are slowing down of desktop Macs and desktop computers generally, they have still invested in putting M3 into the iMac. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Apple have got that, that feeling of sentiment, of looking back at Steve Jobs, knowing that it was the iMac that saved the company, that they're continuing in their lineup. They could do away with it altogether, but I'd just like to think there's a little bit of sentiment running through the veins over at Cupertino. So why do we love our iMac so much? They're fantastic machines. They'll do whatever you want them to. If you spec up the new M3 iMac all the way, you've got a machine that will do most any work you could possibly ask of it. But there's something else. Because of the time served, because of the length of time they've been with us, they become almost part of the family. They become part of the furniture, part of the home. I can't ever think of getting rid of any of the iMacs I've got. The new M3 iMac, I haven't had much time with it yet, but I'm already loving using it. There's something about iMacs. I've once said that they're kind of the most Mac of all Macs. When you walk into a studio and you see a bank of iMacs there, ah, it's almost as if you've got some more respect for the, the company that you're going into or the designers you're working with. There's just something about seeing iMac. And I, for one, love working on iMac more than any other machine out there. Perhaps I should have got an iMac with more spec on it this time around. 
but I had the M1 Max, so I kind of figured, well, that's what's doing all the work, but I love iMac so much, and it's clear that you do too. So on the last videos, you were really good at getting involved and commenting on, on the video. Let me know, what is it that you love about your iMac? Not why or should you go and buy the new M3 iMac? I'd love to know what it is that you love about using your iMac. If you still got an iMac from 2010 and you're using it, why are you staying with iMac? I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video, sticking through to the end if you managed to do that. And hopefully we're gonna start another conversation because iMacs clearly are emotive. I didn't realize how much love there was out there for them until the end of last year. So I'll be back next week with another video. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribing to the channel really, really does help me out and make sure to turn on notifications as well. As I said, I'll be back next week with another video. So hopefully I'll see you then. Don't forget, let me know why you love iMac. I'll see you soon.